Indonesia is a well-known tourist destination. The country is situated in the maritime Southeast Asia, between the Indian Ocean to the south and west, the Timor Sea and the Arafura Sea to the south, the Bay of Bengal to the northwest, the South China Sea or the Pacific Ocean and several other marginal seas to the north. However, if you have an interest in supervolcanoes, there is one specific location in Indonesia that you would be drawn to and that is Lake Toba. Many visitors marvel at the lake's beauty, but they may be unaware that beneath it is the world's largest volcano, which has recently cracked open the ground. How powerful is this volcano? And will the eruption have an impact on where you live? Stick around till the end to know all there is about this massive beast. Indonesia is located in the Ring of Fire, making it one of the world's most volcanically active and earthquake prone regions. The Indonesian islands were produced primarily as a result of volcanic activity and ocean mountain building activity driven by tectonic plate movement in Asia, the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Two gigantic plates, the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific plates, move beneath an even larger plate in the Indonesian region. The islands of Indonesia are prone to earthquakes and even tsunamis. The country ranks third among countries with the most volcanoes, trailing only the United States and Russia. This region, particularly Java, is highly unstable tectonically, making agricultural conditions in some parts unpredictable. Many Indonesian islands are the rugged remains of long dead volcanoes. In Indonesia there are roughly 400 volcanoes. A chain of volcanoes stretches from Sumatra to Flores, with additional volcanoes in Sulawesi and the Moluccas. Indonesia is also one of the world's most geologically active regions. Each day, three earthquakes measuring five or higher on the Richter scale occur, and volcanic eruptions kill nearly 10 times more people than in any other country. The country has 76 historically active volcanoes, which is more than any other country. In 2006, Indonesia recorded 1,171 volcanic eruptions, second only to Japan's 1,274. Volcanoes in Indonesia are called Gunung, which means fire mountains. The Volcanological Survey of Indonesia is Indonesia's primary volcano monitoring institution. The Dutch established it in the 1920s and the Indonesian government expanded it. It has observation sites in some of the most dangerous volcanoes in Indonesia, like Merapi, Sinabung and other Indonesian volcanoes, and are regularly studied, although predicting their activity with any degree of accuracy is practically difficult. There is no other place on Earth where so many people live so close to so many active volcanoes. On Java alone, 120 million people live in the shadow of more than 30 volcanoes, a proximity that has claimed the lives of 140,000 people in the last 500 years. Volcanoes kill in a variety of ways, including choking mud, blistering lava and tsunamis that frequently follow an eruption. A thousand people were killed when Mount Agung erupted in 1963. Others died of famine when the ash drowned their crops. The villagers regarded it as a heavenly gesture and what was formerly referred to as divine wrath is now considered a gift. The eruption's ash and sand were utilized to build hotels, restaurants and villas for foreign visitors. Mount Tambora is another major volcano in Indonesia. The volcano may be seen from the northern shore of Sumbawa, an island on the eastern end of the old Dutch East Indies, now known as Indonesia. Mount Tambora erupts on occasion. One of the most cataclysmic explosions ever recorded occurred in 1815. Tambora was more than 14,000 feet tall in 1815, but when it exploded, it threw more than 4,000 feet off the top, leaving a crater four miles across and 2,000 feet deep. A small eruption, as if the volcano was training, was followed by enormous rumbling noises on April 5, 1815. On April 10th, there were further cannon-like rumblings and the eruption exploded fully that evening, with an explosion heard more than 1,200 miles distant in Sumatra. Massive rocks were thrown around like pebbles, causing devastation in every direction. The mountain erupted in columns of flame, causing a plume of gas, dust and smoke to travel miles into the sky. Rivers of incandescent ash streamed down the hills at almost 100 miles per hour, killing everything in their path before hissing and boiling into the sea. Tsunamis surged across the Java Sea, trapping ships in pumice stone rafts and volcanic ash reached as far as Borneo. For weeks, ash and debris rained down, poisoning fresh water sources, destroying crops and causing lung diseases from sulfurous gases. 
The death toll in Sumatra and surrounding islands is believed to be between 60,000 and 90,000 people. Thousands more died as a result of malnutrition and disease, putting the overall death toll in the summer war and neighbouring islands to anywhere between 60,000 and 90,000 people. However, in 2010, Mount Merapi had a more recent eruption. Mount Merapi is a volcano on Indonesia's Java Island. Mount Merapi, also known as the Mountain of Fire, is the most active volcano in the Ring of Fire. It has erupted 68 times since the 16th century, with 10 explosions killing people since 1920. Approximately 300 days of the year, smoke may be seen coming from the volcano's summit. Mount Merapi is an active composite volcano that stands 9,551 feet tall and has endocytic lava. It features a cone-shaped base and steep sides built of lava and ash from past eruptions. When eruptions occur, they are typically violent, spewing lava and ash. Until about 10,000 years ago, eruptions were rife with basaltic lava. Since then, the eruptions have become much more intense, producing lava domes on a regular basis. Pyroclastic flows have commonly erupted from the collapse of these domes. Mount Merapi erupted three times in a 20-kilometer radius surrounding its slopes during October 25th and October 26, 2010, forcing people to be evacuated. When the pyroclastic activity stopped, a cloud of smoke soared to one and a half kilometers in height, killing 18 people from burns and respiratory problems. The evacuation zone was in effect from October 17th until October 29th, 2010. Lava ejections with hot ash clouds descended down the slope and travelled three kilometres and pressure looked to be dropping behind the lava dome that had formed in the crater. However, the death toll soared to 30. On October the 30th, Mount Merapi erupted once more, shooting a fireball two kilometres into the air. Magma continued to surge into the lava dome, resulting in ash falling more than 30 kilometres away and sand falling 10 kilometres away. These eruptions, on the other hand, are little in comparison to the threat posed by the Toba supervolcano, which is a ticking time bomb. It's hidden beneath the placid Sumatran waters of Lake Tobon. It occupied a 100-kilometer-long caldera and was the site of the Earth's most recent super eruption 75,000 years ago. Toba has erupted only twice in the previous million years, the most recent being 840,000 years ago. Each eruption poured nearly 2,800 cubic kilometers of magma, enough to cover the whole United States in ash. Super eruptions are classified as level 8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. They are powered by huge magma reservoirs in the upper continental crust. The lava contains a high concentration of silica, making it viscous and explosive, as opposed to those found in Hawaii which are low in silica and less explosive. The Toba eruption has a volume of around 2,800 cubic kilometers, while the Huckleberry Ridge eruption at Yellowstone, which happened 2.2 million years ago, had a volume of 2,500 cubic kilometers. The volume of Yellowstone's Lava Creek, which erupted 600,000 years ago, was 1,000 cubic kilometers. Mount Toba is exposed up to 1,200 feet through the caldera walls, and the mountain on Samosir Island is over 800 meters thick. According to research, ash from the inland eruption may have made its way to Central Asia and the Middle East. An international team investigated two sites on the south coast of South Africa discovering human activity both before and after the eruption. The scientists identified microscopic shards of volcanic glass in the silt at both places, which are part of the tephra or debris blasted from a volcano during an eruption. When the shards were chemically tested, it was revealed that they were a match for Mount Toba, which is around 9,000 kilometers away. These are thought to be the first volcanic deposits of their kind discovered so far from their source, illustrating the Toba eruption's intensity. This led scientists to estimate the height of Toba volcano's eruption column at 30 to 50 miles, or 50 to 80 kilometers. The eruption happened at a crucial period in human evolution when Homo sapiens was about to expand outside of Africa. Some experts claim that the sulphur spewed by Toba created a volcanic winter, resulting in a human population limit of only 10,000 people. But what makes the Lake Toba volcano frightening is that it's a ticking time bomb. It is unclear why massive eruptions like those on Mount Toba occur. For instance, they may have been caused by a sudden rise in the rate of magma flux into the reservoir. 
However, geologists are unsure of this, which is why a group from the University of Geneva in Switzerland and the Peking University in China traveled to Toba to investigate. The researchers wanted to determine what signs suggest an impending super eruption. Their research was summarized and presented in a paper that was included in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Zircon is a mineral that can be discovered quite regularly in the aftermath of violent eruptions. This particular crystal included quantities of uranium and lead that made precise dating possible. The scientists were able to estimate the pace of magma accumulation beneath the Toba caldera prior to the previous eruptions of the volcanoes by integrating these measurements with thermal and geochemical modeling. This allowed them to determine the rate at which magma was accumulating. The findings indicate that the rate of magma influx has been relatively constant over the past 2.2 million years, which suggests that the Toba's super eruptions were not caused by a sudden increase in magma, but rather by the rising temperature of the magma reservoir over time. This finding is troubling because it suggests that geological indications on the surface of the Earth, such as cracked rocks or gas seepage, do not necessarily need to occur prior to an eruption in order for one to take place. As a result, supervolcanoes have the potential to be unpredictable. Let us know what you think about supervolcanoes in the comments section below.